I'm Audra Stafford here at San Diego's Old Globe Theater where the Jane Austen classic Emma is being brought to life in a brand new musical. In the English countryside, amid great beauty and privilege, a young woman named Emma devoted herself to one task. Mr. Elton will be the next person to benefit from my help. Mm -hmm. It's a story that's been told. I sought to bring two people together and I shall never do it again. Emma. And retold. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. But one that's never been told quite like this. I made the match myself. I think not. You're just in shock. Sorry, no. But I can do these things myself while you can in a It was a very appealing story, and I think it, it was fun to musicalize. Writer-composer Paul Gordon scripted his first version of Emma back in 2006. Emma always appealed to me, even when I, in the days when I was writing Jane Eyre. I think the story is really contemporary. I think it's, it's very light-hearted. Sweet sister Mary takes my hand. What is he saying to Jane Fairfax? I wish I had some talent. Why is she leaning on him? Is this a match? Yeah, who knew Jane Austen was funny. Like Apparently so not funny. director Jeff but Calhoun. I'm not an Austenite or an Austen file or an Austenette, what do they call it? which Paul is. So at first I was nervous about that, but I think the value in that is my fresh baby eyes helping sort of bridge from the fans to people that maybe aren't aware of it and still make it accessible to them and entertaining. At the center of the story is, of course, Emma herself. She's a bit of a narcissist, but she's a lovable narcissist. And that narcissism is captured in everything, from the dialogue... You're simply jealous because I've made a success of matchmaking. ...to the music... Yes, I could find a match for even you. ...to even the set. I call her my secret weapon. We went with the maze. Uh, we thought it was a good metaphor for the show and her life. And also, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a donut a turntable that goes around it, uh, but only like a piece of it. So Emma can stay in the middle, and of course, she's the center of her universe. The world re revolves around Emma. Emma, the dawn breaks with your smile. And for just a while, And as the story develops, what I find very interesting is that she be actually becomes self-aware, realizes that she was wrong about essentially everything, and admits it. And by doing so, really opens up her heart and opens up herself for love. I'm likely to You know, I really just try to make my way through the novel first, and I and I make notes, and I and I just have ideas for songs as I'm reading, and usually it's it's all I can do to prevent myself from running to the piano to start. I really want to know where the story is going, because if I stop and write a song for each moment that I think is great, the musical is going to be four hours long. It feels like It's been a long process for Gordon getting Emma from Paige to the Old Globe stage. But he says the payoff is worth it. You know, it's really just amazing for me that I get to work at the Old Globe Theater and get to do Emma here. I think it's everyone's you know, top two favorite theaters in the country. It's one of the best shops, the best costume shops, scenic shops, prop shops. But we also have just the finest actors that San Diego and New York has to offer. We're very, very blessed. Emma continues here at the Old Globe through March 6th. For BroadwayWorld.com, I'm Audra Stafford.